Before I started doing Rosie's Antique Auctions Teak Stock in Marshall, Michigan, which is coming up here in May, I was doing other shows in Michigan, including this one in Utica, and it was a great show, but it poured rain the last day, and this has been lost footage from an old camera that we just found. There's some really cool stuff I want to show you besides all of this really great Phoenix and Consolidated Glass, so come along and let's take a look. Okay, the paint jobs are awful, but these concrete urns, and these are older, these look like 19... 40s. They are very popular with garden art people and decorators. It would be worth either stripping them back to concrete or possibly painting them white. It's an interesting display. Colombian pure manila rope. This would have been in the 1920s, 30s, 40s range. Something that you would use to measure and cut rope in a hardware store. That is something different. I can't imagine there's many of these left because a lot of them, again, went to scrap drives during the Second World War or were just thrown away when hardware stores closed as big box stores replaced them. Tweedy feels about the same way we do about the rain today. These candle holders are interesting. I don't know what the symbol on the bottom is, so I don't know if these were from some fraternal hall or might have been used in a funeral setting, or if that's just a design they put on for design's sake. But they're neat tall floor candles. Another way to deal with the rainy day show is to just bring stuff that can get wet, or only expose the things that can get wet. <laughs> I may be doing this at my booth later on. They say we're going to have a break in the rain and we'll probably get some customers in the middle of the day. I have to be honest from what I'm seeing on this table. Yeah, it doesn't really matter if it gets wet because there's nothing super amazing or non-waterproof. There is one neat old bike. It's a woman's bike, but this has got a lot of age. Interesting fork in the front as well. This is an Elgin, and I suspect that this is old enough to have a slip gear, which is a different type of gearing that you see in 1930s, 40s, and earlier bikes. And so this, even just for its parts, because it's got the rack, even though it needs some repair, if you couldn't restore this one, or if you had one more valuable to restore, it would be worth it for some of the parts on. Now they're serving glasses of water here. These are Tiffin for Franciscan. Went along with a lot of the dinnerware in the 1970s. These are Homer Laughlin with the 1940s date code. It's such a great pattern. A lot of companies did these Mexican-inspired patterns in the 1940s, and this was done on the Riviera Blank. That's why you've got the square shapes. I love square shaped dishes. I have this weird notion that they fit on a table better, because tables are usually square, so why not? A pair of ruby small ewers is $44, and these are interesting. They're swung, they're pulled, but then they also have the candle holder in the base. The little patio light is only 15 in the crackle glass by Viking. That's a good price. Here's the Hall Ronald Reagan teapot for 75. That used to sell for double that. I suspect at some point the political collectors will get interested in these and the prices will go back up. I just sold my pen and pine cone carnival bowl yesterday here, and there's sailboats as well. These more obvious patterns seem to be what people are noticing because they're big and they just grab your attention. A lot of people liking these wrought iron church style candles. At $50 a pair, they're a pretty good deal for a decorator in particular. Everything you see here is Occupied Japan, priced from $2.50 to $5. I want to show this because I want you to understand that there is a lot of Occupied Japan because that was a mark that was required from 1947 to 1952. So you see everything from little figurines to giant machines that said occupied Japan on them. So they're not particularly uncommon, but there are a lot of cute designs in them. And there are collectors, but they don't pay a lot. Well, there's a new happy face for me. The one on the left is the McCoy mug, but the one on the right is a pencil sharpener. They are asking 25. It's a neat design for a smiley face collector. That would be a fair price. Now, I like popsicle stick art. I do consider it a form of folk art. It's very 1950s, 60s vintage. But this person did some fun things. I'm used to seeing lamps. Well, this is a box. 
priced at 39 I think that's not bad because think of the amount of work it took to make that. And then this one is a purse and I find that really cute and just sort of intriguing as well. $25. It's just fun. The hinges and it opens and you've just got a little box purse there. A couple of cute 50s western items. The Roy Rogers paint set with pictures and stencils. It's hard to find those unused. And then I like this little guy just to hang things on. Somebody made him by hand in the 50s. I like finding these old decals because sometimes you will find very plain things that were used in kitchens and people would put decals on them and they're collectible for that reason. And here you've got the Campbell Soup Kids. There's swans. Sometimes you'll see flamingos. There's another Campbell Soup Kid. Let's see if we have any different ones here. These are four Campbell Soup Kids cooking away. Very cute. A fun thing to collect that's not a lot of money. Well, this is neat because it's a porthole, but they actually know the ship it came from. And it has the screen. I never see them with the screen, so that's different. It was the Sewell Avery for Great Lakes Steel and Pittsburgh Steamship, and it sailed from the 40s to the 80s. That's the era of ships that we see a lot of these coming off of now, especially a lot of Second World War Liberty ships gave up their portholes to collectors. And they usually will sell in this size for as much as $300 now. These big plastic signs are starting to sell because they look good in barns and it's a lot of look for a little less money than the old porcelain enamel signs, which are getting very hard to find in good condition. This is a Tonka toy that is incredibly clean. It's got the original boat. This is late 1960s. Hard to find this combination together in one piece. They want $130 for the set. I do not think that's unreasonable given the condition and the completeness of it all. I like the old beer trays, and these are a little more obscure regional breweries. Utica Club, look at the bracelet on that woman's wrist. I believe it was the American Bisque Company, but there were various companies that made Disney shakers under license, and this is Pluto for $10 for the pair. You'll see Donald Duck quite a bit, other characters as well. Two generations of jade eye here. The left piece is Fenton from the 1920s. They're jade green, and the right piece is an early Fire King piece from the late 40s. This is so cool. I just love jarts. I have not had a set for a while. Only can sell them at shows. This globe is neat. It's before the Second World War. And this gal had a ton of really bright Tupperware, and I was looking for bright things to perk me up on a very wet and gray day. Now if you look at the price tags here, you'll see these are priced to sell. If you're pricing these good Pyrex patterns to sell, and some of these other go-along companies, Fire King and Corell and Corning, there are still definitely a lot of people who have nostalgia for this. They love the way it works. You can't get it new anymore. It's been around for 50 years, and a lot of people are very familiar with it. So this is what's going into a lot of kitchen collections. This is from a generation before, however, and I really like this Delphite Blue. Various companies made it. I believe at last did some. McKee did a lot of the kitchenware pieces, which are some of the more collectible and popular pieces to have. And some of the pattern pieces are McKee as well. And I love the ring salt and pepper and various spice shakers. The children's dishes are really cute. And then later on, you see some more modern styles. This is Fire King's Delphite Blue from the 1960s in the middle of a bunch of other pieces from the 30s. So really great color. I believe Armour Bronze was the maker of the Beatrice and Dante bookends from about 1930. This case has a really nice Tiffany piece priced at $250. This is Sterling with the Cottage. This is from about the 1920s. And there's the Tiffany and Company New York bag. That is a very, very handsome piece of silver. Treasurecraft did cookie jars for 1970s, 80s, and 90s Disney films, including 101 Dalmatians. Spring is here, and not everyone is a pickleball player. Wood croquet sets do very well. They need to have all the original balls and the wickets and everything else. This one's in pretty good shape from about 1970 at 125. Nylint was another American company that made metal steel toys back in the 50s and 60s. 
Cornish ware from England is one of my favorite kitchenware lines. It was made in the 1920s, I believe, originally, and then kept going for many years because it's just so attractive with the blue lines, and they made all sorts of different tableware pieces. There's your logo. That's what you're looking for. This is fairly plain, but it is a nice sewing cabinet from an old general store, priced right for the condition, certainly. And this is a nice barrister's bookcase. There's a lot of good furniture at this show. It's a shame they're having to hide it under the tents today with the weather. Six dozen eggs. You'll see a lot of interest in old farm stuff and primitives, everything from this kind of thing to double boilers in the green enamel from the 30s. Always nice. That tends to sell well if you keep the prices right. We had an estate sale once with a bunch of fly tying equipment, and boy, did we make a lot of money. This is a passion, and people spend money where their passions are. Nice, complete kit. I love these boat motors. They're 30% off. I think they have the old school prices from when these were being used by people actually making the old boats. That's a great one from about 1950 and the Mercury. Well, that looks like all the boats when I was a kid. Very fun and they work. Definitely more interest in these old oak file cabinets and office pieces. That one is priced over $500 and it's in great condition in spite of the wet. Fortunately, they have it safely inside. And I really like the gothic style of this stained glass piece. Probably dates to the 1890s with that green, but what a beautiful window. Any kind of local advertising, Budlong Pickles. This is a Pontiac milk bottle from right in this area in Michigan, and that's why it's priced the way it is. A couple of old patent medicine bottles as well. These are pretty cool and very collectible. Most of the dealers put their paper away, but these folks have a good tent. And isn't this cool? This is a puzzle from about 1900, 1910, advertising this company. You can tell the age because of the depiction of Uncle Sam, and really fun. And then a bunch of advertising mirrors. I just love this stuff. The graphics are so great. These are little pocket mirrors that were given out. The power washer, boy, well, somebody finally gave her credit. That looks like a hard job. Carmen says so, too. These are really fun, and they were given out by a lot of different companies and are very collectible now. The only reason I bought it was because... <laughs> oh, cool! It pops open. Oh, that's really awesome. Yeah. That neat? That's very cool. I haven't seen that before. Yeah, me neither. This has to be one of the first ones. And it cylinder goes on, yeah. That's, uh, oh, I see. And it's a clear tone cylinder, and then so it's like the old recording. It's been really fun bringing you this from the Utica, Michigan Antique Show. I hope to come back here and do another show, and we'll have more adventures from the world of antiques and vintage soon. Bye for now.